Don't get the most expensive guitar, get the right guitar. Hey everyone, I'm Jack Fawcett and welcome to Real Guitar Talk, the series where I talk about real guitar issues in a very open, hopefully nuanced way in ways that I haven't heard discussed before. Now this one is kind of the continuation of a few other videos that I've done and this regards what guitar you should get what makes a good guitar, and why you should get it for the right reasons, essentially. Now, before you watch this one, I would highly suggest watching the one where I discuss whether or not your inexpensive guitar is actually as good as a higher-end guitar. This one is something that I'm kind of hyper aware of because I hear it so often when somebody will say something to the degree of like, you know, well, my really low-end and expensive guitar I have it because it outplayed and was better than, you know, all these high-end custom shop instruments. In that sense, we're going to talk about what actually makes a good guitar. The important thing to reiterate about that one is, first of all, it shouldn't matter. You get the right guitar, and we're going to talk about why you should get the right guitar in a few minutes here. The other thing is, is that when you say that, and I'm going to say this a little more bluntly than I did in that last video, when you say that, even if it is true, even if you are the one who happened to get a lower-end guitar that really is, you know, amazingly better than all the super expensive ones, people don't believe you when you say that. It sounds too much like you're making excuses to keep up with the Joneses, essentially compensating for maybe this perceived inadequacy for having a lower-end guitar, like it's a hierarchy of whoever has the highest-end guitar is somehow... A greater stature than somebody who plays the lower end guitar. Now, that of course applies to a lot of things in life. You know, people with fancier cars will look down and thumb their noses at people with less expensive cars. You know, you can talk about it in fashion, you can talk about it in all kinds of things. We can pretty well establish that with guitar playing, the most important thing is that you be a good player. Oh, see, this wraps in with tone is in your fingers too, which I hate, I hate that phrase. Regardless, what I want to talk about first is what actually makes a good guitar, what's the difference between higher-end guitars and some of the lower-end guitars, and why you should actually not get the highest-end guitar, you should get the right guitar, and what does that even mean? So, this was something that came up a lot in that video, was, well, okay, well, objectively, what makes a good guitar? Obviously, one of the first things is going to be how functional is it? right? You know, how good is the fingerboard? Is the fingerboard all kinds of warped and bent, or is it, you know, pretty straight and, and ruly, and does it, you know, respond to the truss rod well? How well are the frets done? Are the frets super sharp along the edges? Are they uneven? Do they need dressings and things? How well is the finish done? Is the finish kind of, you know, flaking, or is the finish, like, super gummy, or is it just basically, like, encased in a hard layer of plastic? How good is the electronics? You know, I've played a lot of guitars where the bones of the guitar are really good, but the electronics were garbage. There were a lot of Epiphones that I've played that were like that. You know, it was like, and, and that's not a bad thing because you can switch out the electronics, but, you know, still kind of from a standing point, if you have electronics that don't work, then it needs to be addressed. You know, once you get past the functional level, then you get up to the next level. The next level gets to be kind of, again, how good are the bones of the guitar? How resonant is the piece of wood? Now, people will get into this a lot about, like, how much of a difference does tone wood make? Well, if you've played a guitar that has a really resonant piece of wood versus one that doesn't, you do notice the difference. Now, what we're doing is we're, with each kind of circle, we're focusing in a little bit more. And with each circle, this is where it gets tricky. It gets less perceivable to other people and gets more expensive. This is, we're starting to already get into why you shouldn't just get the highest end guitar. So for instance, a, a much more resonant piece of wood versus kind of a dead flat piece of wood, the more resonant piece of wood is going to sound better. It will sort of feel better as you hit a chord in your hand. Now, with an acoustic guitar, that might actually be more important directly to your audience. But even if you're plugging in already, you're sort of removing one step from that. If it's an electric guitar, the amplifier and the effects that you use can almost bury that to the point of being not important at all. You know, if you're using a lot of gain and a lot of effects, it's going to matter less and less and less. I'm not saying it's insignificant, but I am going to say it's going to matter less and less and come across to the audience less and less. 
how good is the finish? How well is the finish done kind of on the next level, right? Okay, so it's not just like a, a, a junk finish that's not really doing well, but then, you know, you get up to the next level and how good is the finish? Is it, you know, is it a poly or a nitro finish or something else? Again, kind of, you know, even getting to the frets, like how good do the frets feel and everything and how good are the pickups? How good are the electronics? Are they the best electronics for this? And, you know, you keep kind of zeroing in and you keep getting up to the next level at each level, you really have to focus harder to notice the difference, and at each level, it gets much more expensive. So, for instance, like if you're talking about, let's talk about Stratocasters for a minute, because I, I love Stratocasters. I have several really nice American Stratocasters. Oh, now I know what you're thinking. Many of you saw my last video about why you shouldn't buy a new guitar, you should practice instead and that you shouldn't just be consumerism and get a bunch of things that you... Okay, so first of all, because I'm going to explain myself here. First of all, I do practice. I practice all the time, and you should too. I stand by that point. Second of all, I said you don't need a new guitar. That doesn't mean you shouldn't necessarily get a new guitar. I said you don't need a new guitar. Now, I don't need all the Stratocasters that I have. I like having them, but if I just had one Stratocaster for the rest of my life, that would really be all. Do I even really need that? Now we're going to get a little too deep. And thirdly, all the advice I give you in these videos is really more guidelines than actual rules. I digress. One of my favorite guitars, a very, very special guitar to me, is a Fender American Standard Stratocaster. Now, I have modified it. It's got different pickups and electronics. I even switched out the pickguard and the, uh, the tuners and things because I just like the vintage style a little better. It has nothing to do with function. It just has to do with me enjoying the guitar that way a little bit more. That's not actually the best Stratocaster I have, objectively speaking. I have other Stratocasters that have better electronics, better pickups, more resonant pieces of wood, better finish. The finish is just done more nicely. The difference is less noticeable. However, to jump from that level of American Standard up to the level of the much higher end ones takes a lot more focus and dedication for the person building it. That means that it's going to cost a lot more money. And this is the real key thing to take away from this video. If that guitar is better, it's not necessarily better in a way that reflects the difference in price. Let's talk about the Epiphone Sheridan versus the ES-335. Here's a similar one. I've owned Sheridans. I've owned 335s. I've never in my life played a Sheridan that was actually better than a 335. Now, the Sheridan is a great guitar. That's not a knock on that guitar. This is the way that it should be. A more expensive guitar should be put together better. You should be getting more for your money. But here's the thing. The Sheridans come in, I think they're, they're probably around $1,000 right now. The ES-335 somewhere up in the $3,000 range. The 335s are better. But they're not really $2,000 better. As far as practical application from the player side, might actually take that much money to make it that much nicer. But that doesn't mean that it translates to the consumer. This is why you shouldn't just get the nicer guitar. You should get the right guitar. And it's important to remember that even if another guitar is better than yours by any objective standard, that doesn't mean that your guitar is junk. We have this sort of inclination as people to think that if something's better, uh, it taints everything that's beneath it. And that's just not true. Again, that Stratocaster I go back to, the Stratocaster that I love, my, my red Stratocaster. Many of you have seen it in a lot of videos. I use it all the time. It's, you know, if, I don't have a favorite guitar, but let's just say if I could, you know, only save like one guitar from a burning building, that would be a, probably the one that I'd grab first. Maybe one or two others would, well, I'd try and get them in different hands. And I'm already getting off topic. My point is that just because there are other guitars that are better than that one doesn't mean that that one is bad. That line of thinking doesn't even make sense. By that rationale, there's like one perfect guitar in the world. It's probably some, you know diamond-encrusted PRS that costs, you know, oodles of thousands of dollars, and then everything else is just junk. It, it doesn't make sense to think that way. Again, it keeps going back to that hierarchy of we perceive that if someone else has a guitar that's more expensive than us, somehow they're on a higher level than us, and really it does not get down to that. It just gets down to get it for the right reason, get it for the love of music, and find a guitar that suits you. Now, there's a whole other aspect to this that you can add in, which is just personal preference. 
And also, what goes into making a guitar? And, and again, kind of regarding, you know, price and things, but... For instance, do you like one type of neck versus another type of neck? Do you like one type of pickup versus another type of pickup? Certain types of guitar building lend themselves to being produced a little bit less expensively. Obviously, like the obvious comparison here is Fender versus Gibson. Fender guitars are going to be less expensive to produce with the bolt-on neck than Gibson guitars with their set necks and their arch tops and things. It's just going to cost more money to make those. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're better quality wise, that they're better tonally. It just takes more money to make that type of guitar than it does to make this type of guitar. So kind of wrapping it all up and getting to the real heart of what I'm intending to translate to you all in this video is let go of the keeping up with the Joneses thing. Just forget about who plays the best guitar. You know, I, I made this analogy in my other video too, where you know, I have a Gibson ES345 that I absolutely love. It's probably not as good as something like a Collings or, you know, some other handmade archtop guitar. But if I were to take that out to a gig and somebody came in with a guitar that cost 10 times more and tried to lord it over me, I'd just be like, oh, okay, well, that person clearly has a bad personality. I don't really care about one-upping them because they're focused on the wrong thing. Your focus should be on making music. Now, you should get the best guitar of the ones that work for you. You should get one that suits you that, you know, and, and out of the 10 that you really like, if you can afford it, find the one that is the best for you. Again, the point is, is that that's not necessarily going to be the highest end guitar that's out there because then all you're doing is just partaking in the rat race. It's just a lot of ridiculous trying to one up each other and just don't play the game. So that's what I think. Please let us know what you think on this subject. And I can appreciate the thought process because I've been there. You know, there were there was a certain time when I really felt like, you know, well, if I'm going to play a Fender, it's got to be a USA made Fender. And the ethics aside, because there are certain ethical issues that I, that I don't really want to get in there. Some people have ethical problems, but a lot of people have the keeping up with the Joneses mentality. Like, oh, well, if you're playing a Mexican made Fender... It, I'm, it's somehow lesser than the U.S. made one, and then that must translate to me being a lesser player. than. Well, one of my favorite Stratocasters, which is actually that one right there, that's a Made in Mexico Stratocaster, and it really plays fantastic. Now, does it play and you know do as well as its U.S. counterpart, one of the American 60s reissues? That's a, a, a classic player one. No, it's still not quite as good as the USA counterpart. But it's a really, really good guitar. And again, the difference in quality to the difference in price are not equal to each other. They don't correlate exactly. One of my other favorite guitars is a Fender Japanese Stratocaster, which is just absolutely fantastic. It's an older one. It's a wonderful guitar. I absolutely love playing it. Again, it doesn't really matter if it's better or worse. That doesn't translate to me as a player or my value as a musician. So... Find the right guitar. Get it because it's the guitar that inspires you, that you can get good tones out of, that you can make good music with. Don't worry about whether or not it's the best. Don't go out of your way to say that it's better than something that it's not better than. Because again, then you're just partaking in the rat race. Just get out of the race. Be a musician, not someone trying to keep up with the Joneses. That's what I got to say about this. What do you all think? Please let us know in the comments. I'm Jack Fawcett. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.